Okay, so today we're talking about the other half of the prolonged PTT. Last time I talked to you about the prolonged PTT when only the PTT is prolonged, but the PT is normal, okay? I told you that if you're gonna ever evaluate a prolonged PTT, you have to have the PT. There is no such thing as a prolonged PTT and you don't know what the PT is, okay? You always wanna know the prothrombin time. People like to think about the prothrombin time as the INR. So the INR is a ratio, but the prothrombin time actually tells you how much time it takes for the blood to clot in seconds when you add a thromboplastin reagent to citrated blood, okay? All right, so the PT is really important in making the evaluation of why the PTT is prolonged, okay? So if the PT is prolonged, remember last time I talked about the PT being normal and the PTT being prolonged, but if the PT is prolonged, it's very helpful because what it does now, it tells you that there are three possible scenarios, okay? What are those three possible scenarios? One scenario is that you have multiple factors deficient along any part of the coagulation cascade. Okay, so if your PT is prolonged and your PTT is prolonged, the prolonged PT and PTT tell you that the problem is on both sides of the coagulation cascade, probably, or the common pathway. Okay, so the first one is that it's on both sides. And so perhaps there's vitamin K deficiency, which can cause coagulation factor deficiency on both sides of the aisle. Okay. Or it could be a multiple factor inhibitor. So you want to know what the PT is. Okay. That's the first scenario that there are multiple coagulation factors that are abnormal. The second scenario is that a common pathway factor is abnormal. So remember the common pathway factors are five, 10, two, and fibrinogen. All right. So those are in the common pathway. If any one of these is abnormal, so low, then it's gonna cause the PT and the PTT to be prolonged. So that's the second major reason why both the PT and the PTT would be prolonged, okay? And then the third thing that can happen is that you maybe are, are on an anticoagulant that's prolonging both the PT and the PTT. So you always wanna check, is the patient on heparin or is the patient on warfarin? Okay, warfarin is easy because you know that warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent factors, two, seven, nine, and 10 in protein CNS. But for the purposes of the prolonged PT or the PTT, you really are worried about two, seven, nine, and 10, the vitamin K dependent factors. Those are across both across the aisle, right? And so there, you know, two, seven, nine, and ten cover both the extrin cover the extrinsic, intrinsic, and common pathway factors. If you are on heparin, now usually we measure heparin with a PTT, but heparin actually inhibits ten, which is a common pathway factor, and heparin also inhibits thrombin. Okay, so thrombin is also factor two. It's a common pathway factor. And 10 clearly is a common pathway factor. And then you ask like, oh, okay, so why doesn't heparin prolong the PTT and the PT? That's because usually when we measure the PT, we have heparin binders. And so it binds up the heparin and the PT is not prolonged. That means if there is excess heparin in the sample, our binders in the PT sample have too much heparin and so they're saturated and then you can measure heparin's effect on both the PT and the PTT. So if you have super therapeutic anticoagulation, so the warfarin for instance, that will prolong both the PT and the PTT. And if your heparin is super therapeutic as well, that will prolong both the PT and the PTT. Okay, so three major scenarios where both could be elevated. One, you have multiple deficiencies on both sides of the aisle. So disseminated intravascular coagulation is an example. Vitamin K deficiency is an example where multiple coagulation factors on the extrinsic pathway, intrinsic pathway, and the common pathway are affected. The second is that there is a common pathway factor affected. And the third is that you're in an anticoagulant that's affecting both sides of the aisle or just one factor. Okay, all right, so that's where the PT and the PTT are prolonged. The workup is pretty much the same. You wanna get both a PT and a PTT mixing study. You don't start off with ordering factors, so you're gonna get there anyway, but you want to order both the PT and a PTT mixing study because you wanna ask yourself, does this correct? or is there an inhibitor? So if it corrects completely, then it's deficiency. If it does not correct completely, if it does not correct to at least three to five seconds of normal, and that's a sign that there's an inhibitor. You wanna know that first before you go ordering factor activity levels. Because what you don't wanna do is order every possible factor on all paths of the cascade, right? You wanna be very targeted and focused. And so if your PT and the PTT do not correct, 
That's interesting because either it means that there are inhibitors of multiple factors or more likely it's a lupus anticoagulant. Okay. But if the PT and PTT both correct, and that's a sign of deficiency, and usually it would be vitamin K deficiency, but it co could also be DIC, which is disseminated intravascular coagulation, and it really is just about consumption of coagulation factors. You could also see it in patients who have liver disease where they don't make coagulation factors as well. Okay, so first things first, if you're evaluating a prolonged PTT and the PT is also prolonged because you always need the PT, you want to then do a mixing study and see, is there a deficiency? So that means the mix corrects completely or within three to five seconds. And then the next step would be to order coagulation factors to see which of the coagulation factors is affected. All right. That's how you work up a PTT when the PT is also prolonged. I will talk to you next time.